Hey everyone, finish watching the next VR Troopers episode, The Rise of the Red Python, the first of the two-part season one finale. And this is a pretty good episode. It starts off, uh, Ryan and JB are out in the park, and a kid comes up asking Ryan for help getting a kitten out of a tree. They don't know who the kitten belongs to, so they decide to look around. Carl Zichter, meanwhile, is complaining about Mayor Rooney, and it's kind of cool to hear a character mentioned without actually seeing them. Although I do wonder if it's foreshadowing, possibly, for an appearance from the mayor in the next episode. In virtual reality, Icebot has created an evil VR trooper of their own, the Red Python. All they need now is a human to take on its power. Ryan and JB take the kitten to an animal shelter, and the woman who works there, Amy, recognizes them from their karate competitions. She's really into martial arts, and uh, she agrees to join them for karate practice. At the dojo, a skug spies on their training. Zichter thinks Amy should be the one to become the Red Python. And then, at the animal shelter, a group of weird people approach Amy and the troopers, and they become skugs. Amy's kidnapped, but the troopers have no idea what Grimlord could possibly want with her. In virtual reality, Grimlord straps a brainwashing device to Amy's head, and it looks kind of like that thing that's on Wolverine's head in uh, his backstory when he's uh, first being turned into Weapon X. That's a cool thing. As an X-Men fan, I thought that was neat. I don't know if it was intentional. He sends uh, Amy as the Red Python out to train with General Ivar, and then Amy's returned to the animal shelter, and it's unclear if she knows what's happened to her. At Tao Dojo, Amy demonstrates her kata for Ryan and JB. They think she's, un they think she's unusually talented for a beginner. And then we get a weird little thing where she talks about the kitten that they turned in that it was claimed by its owners. Okay. It's just kind of weird, because the kitten at the beginning, it seemed to be setting up, like, a really big thing, but nope, the kitten doesn't really matter, it's given away off-screen. So anyway, uh, Amy suddenly grows weak, and she runs into the bathroom, and becomes the Red Python, and teleports away. The troopers don't have time to look for her, though, as Professor Hart calls. Grimlord has launched an, an attack. The troopers split up. JB and Caitlin encounter Red Python. Caitlin is wounded, so the others take her to the lab. She's stuck in her transformed state for now. And that's where it ends. It's a really good episode, cool cliffhanger, high stakes, uh, it's well paced, the action is good, even the combining of the footage is really clever. There's a lot of uh, neat like cutout effects and green screen effects. There's a scene where Amy is green screened in front of a Grimlord, that's really cool. There's a lot of scenes where the Red Python... Like, her image is cut out and placed over Amy and kind of matched up to her movements. That's really cool. The Red Python has a really cool design. I freaking love the design of it. And the idea of an evil trooper has surprisingly not been done very much. I'm guessing it's the lack of corresponding footage. If Matalder or Spielbahn more heavily featured an evil trooper character, I'm thinking VR troopers would definitely have taken an advantage of it. Carl Zichter mentions Mayor Rooney and... That's kind of neat to have a character just mentioned. It kind of helps the world all feel a little bit more cohesive. Oh yeah, the kitten, the kitten doesn't really amount to anything. It's kind of weird, it feels like it's going to be a big deal, but no, nah, it's just a, a plot thing for the troopers to meet with Amy. There is a really funny scene with the kitten that stands out where Jeb, Jeb doesn't like the kitten, so he blows a raspberry at it. And then the kitten does it right back. <laughs> That's pretty funny, I do like that bit. One of the really weird things with the kitten, it has a collar on. The whole episode has a collar on, but apparently it doesn't have any identification or anything. And I was thinking, it's kind of unusual for cats to have collars, like at any age. Especially to have a collar and then not have identification on it. One of the interesting things with this episode, there's no side characters. There's no Woody, no Percy, no Tao. None of them make a single appearance. That's really strange. I don't know why... Nobody's here. Maybe they'll be in the next episode. I'm hoping they're in the next episode, since this is the season one finale. Like, if they hadn't gotten a second season, this could have been it. Not much to analyze here. Everything's handled okay all around, and not much to say here. So, that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. See ya.